Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Manny Uribe, and I want to introduce the class that made uh, tonight's event happen. So we have Lakeisha. Hey. Hi. Sunny. Hi, everyone. Beatrice. Hello. All right. So I'm one of the calling instructors here at HIA, um, and today we will be making torso bibimbap. This is a Korean dish. Um, in a sizzling hot stone pot and demonstrating I'm going to cook some rice and with some panchan. All right. So what is bibimbap? So bibimbap is literally mixing rice. Bibida is a verb in Korean meaning mix to mix. Pap is a rice. So our main meal, rice, steamed cooked rice, with a lot of assorted panchan. This is all the side dishes, as you can see, beautiful colors, lots of um, nutritious um, ingredients of uh, vegetables, and that will go together in a rice with a little bit of gochujang, and we'll talk about this later. Nice. Okay. So what are you making today? I am making ho homemade sriracha from farm from primitive sriracha. All right, so we're making our own hot sauce, we're making our own bibimbap. All right, so what do you think the reason why is that we chose this dish for Earth Week? Well, in Earth Week, we really wanted to promote the natural ingredients and you know, vegetables, something that we can easily get it from the grocery, that it's not too expensive, but also make it delicious, delicious uh, food. And it's all about sustainability. So it's all about sustainability, you're exactly. absolutely correct. So the main reason why I wanted to do this one as well was because, you know, nowadays everyone is mm. buying takeout. So then what do you do with that little bit of food that's left over? You have a, piece, a couple pieces of chicken, you have some leftover veggies, mm -hmm. right? A lot of people, when they, make, when they cook at home, mm -hmm. they buy 100 ingredients to make that one recipe. And then they forget about that other half pepper that was left over, right. all those little carrots or the onions, right? Yes. So then uh, what we do on campus is we try to teach that to all the students. We try mm -hmm. to make sure that everyone knows different ways of preserving. Mm -hmm. So earlier on this semester, we ended up doing our own kimchi. We yes. preserved our onions, right? We have a bunch of different ways we can preserve, reuse, right? Mm -hmm. Do scrap gardening so that way we can do our part. Yes. So first things first, what are we going to do? We are going to make rice. So I brought my own rice cooker and I'm going to start by washing rice. So, so if anyone's going to buy any piece of equipment, I highly recommend getting in a rice cooker, right? We live in a world where convenience is what we look for most of the time. Everyone works, everyone has a busy schedule. So when they get home, this discourages them from cooking is, okay, yes, you can cook rice in a pot and it could be really easy. But this just, it's literally set it and forget it. It does all the work for you while you get the rest of the items cooking. So. So we use uh, medium grain rice. So that's um, sushi grade, we can say. So you, we know that there are different There's types no of rice. Yeah, keep going. Um, and then this is the medium grain rice. And then the, before we uh, put this rice into the rice cooker, I always uh, rinse it. And so I'm gonna just demonstrate how I rinse it. And as you can see, those uh, milky um, water, I'm gonna drain it later. On, I wash it until the water becomes clear. So you wash it until the water becomes clear. Yes. How, how long does that normally take? Uh, it usually takes about you know, two or three times. So okay. I'm gonna just you know show circling and massaging around, and then I'm gonna drain this water into a cup. Okay. And if you have a house plant, and this is something that I learned, you can use this um, washed rice water and then you can use this one for your house plant and that's something i didn't know until recently so i decided you know it's very healthy and good nutritious um components in in ear in this one so maybe you can start using yeah that. i think that's one of the biggest benefits of what we've 
gone through the last year is that everyone's picked up different hobbies and different ways of utilizing their time. So growing herbs at home, planting stuff in your backyard, coming up with different ways of feeding them instead of wasting the water. So that's mm -hmm. a great technique. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So earlier I washed this uh, five cups of rice and this is a two and a half cups of water. In general, uh, the rule of thumb is one cup of rice and two cups of water becomes three cups of rice. But as you um, increase the amount of rice, you need less water. So again, this is a five cups of rice, medium grain, sushi grade rice, and this is two cups of water. So I'm gonna mix it up and it's already rinsed, so I don't need to drain or you know, rinse it again. Now I'm gonna use my rice cooker and I will start transporting this so one. So Dan is here, we'll help you out. Thank you. All right, first things first, we always wash our hands, right? That's common yes, practice. I do that. All right. Very good. As you can see, this is a lot of rice, but the leftover rice, it can be used in so many, so many ways. And that's something that we can talk about this later toward the end of the show. Yeah, we'll save a few minutes at the end for Q&A. All right, and now, so that's enough water? yes, it's in there. I need a little bit more yep. water. Get a little more water. Thank you. Perfect. We have some? We're good? Okay. Now this goes into my rice machine. This is a Korean brand, so you guys... It's a little learning lesson too. Yes. <laughs> Uh, it, it talks to me and it, it became my good friend uh, <laughs> during this cooking time. Um, so right. I'm going to start pressing the button and then you will hear some of the first. So you set it and forget it. Bengmi is a white rice. Bengmi kwesok means you know, fast cooking white rice. So I'm going to press the button. Now it's a starting. It'll take about 15 minutes. Perfect. So now we're going to focus on what are you making? We got I some peppers in here. Sriracha. I am making the, home, the, sriracha? Like the homemade, I mean, hot sauce. Yeah, the hot, hot sauce, sauce, yeah. Oh, oh. oh the mic. This keeps falling. Oh. 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 Technical issues. The, so we're falling. making the hot sauce, right? So a lot of times, especially summer's coming up. So oh. the best part about summer is all the produce you're going to have available at a very low price. So this is a time to really buy what you love to use and then find different ways of preserving them. So you can preserve them with salt, we can pickle some of the items, you can ferment, right? Fermentation is one of the biggest things where um, it takes a lot of uh, practice, but you know, read some good books, get some instructions and fermentation is one of those in the beginning, you know, especially if you like make sourdough or anything like that. Mm -hmm. When you first open the, the can or when you first get a sniff of this, it kind of kicks you in the face, <laughs> right? But then you, you start to really enjoy that taste and it's delicious. Mm -hmm. So it definitely changes the, the flavor of the product. So what do we do? If we have this at home, how do we make this? Um, so my process right now, the process before you um, add like the white vinegar and you let it ferment. You let it ferment, ferment yeah. for days. Is that you chop up the peppers? Uh, you add garlic, kosher salt, brown sugar, and water. You blend it, and then you let it sit over the course of five days, and you stir it every day. You want to make sure you put it in a container that uh, has at least an inch of space, because mm -hmm. as it ferments, it's going to start to grow. So if you max it at the rim, then it's going to just make a huge mess, and okay. it's going to discourage you from doing this ever again. So. And then For on sure, the, right? Oh, oh, I was just about to say, then on the last day, you um, take your white wine vinegar and you add it to you add it to your mixture. 
you blend it up and then you um you pure like puree it. Okay. You strain it. And then like later on you can use like the seeds, like the like the fluff puree to like make a a powder, like a seasoning almost, like a habanero pepper seasoning. Yeah, so we try to use up everything. So once we actually strain something, if there's any leftover, we'll definitely get creative and we'll find ways of utilizing. So mm -hmm. we take the leftover pieces that, you know, that the recipe said to throw away because they were no longer good. We turn it into a powder, we use it for garnish. We add a, a spicy component to another dish. Um, but as she's working, she's getting the peppers into the blender. Um, a key thing to remember is if you want to try something new, try composting at home, right? There's lots of uh, ways of doing it, but the most simple way is going to be getting a old plastic bin you have left over with a lid and then throwing your food scraps, right? Ideally, it would be like your banana peels, uh, your coffee grounds, some paper, leftover newspaper, uh, homework assignments that you already finished and turned in. Instead of just throwing them away or recycling, you can throw it in there as well. Right, so it's gonna take a little bit of time, but it's something that can be added on to your garden. Mm -hmm. So uh, if anyone has any questions, highly recommend taking a horticulture class. I recently just started taking one. I learned so much more that we can incorporate into what we're doing, yeah. which is cooking. So absolutely, definitely doing that more. All right, so as she's doing that, we're gonna start cooking some of these toppings. I'm sorry, what was it called? Panchan. Panchan. That's a side dish. It's so basically, that's all that you see. It's a beautiful, colorful, um, dishes. Now I'm going to start sauteing this onion. That will go on top of the torso tibimpa, which is going to be presented at the end. Um, so we will layer up later. But first, first, first thing first. Nice hot pan. Yep. All right, Let so it this is heating up. That's ready. Smoking. Yep. Oh, yay. Careful. Okay. All right. Remember, every time you're in the kitchen, right, there's mm. always safety hazards like hot oil, um, water, make sure your handles are always facing in a safe way, right? We're cooking, right? So we're adding different things. You have your container. We're working fast. Yep. Right? And if at some point, as you start cooking something, mm. it's too hot, you can always turn on the heat. You can raise it up, right? Yep. There's no reason why it needs to burn. So then we season everything. So um, is there a reason why you chose onions as the first beginning? Because of the color. So okay. I am going to saute four different um, types of vegetables. And this onion gives a you know, good start. And it, it's, um, it's a great way of starting to way. season your pan, right? A absolutely. So we have that. Look, at least when I cook at home, I hate cooking with 20 different pans. So I try to do recipes that utilize the least amount of pans because when you get home, you're tired. Oh, yeah. You want to make sure you're still cooking. But how do you do that without, how do you produce great food without having Too 50 much different work. things? Yeah. Right? And then, yeah, so we have the rice cooker going, we have um, the vegetables. And then it will be, right now, this will give some crunchiness and crispiness. So this is, this is looking good. The next one will be, Shredded some carrots. carrots. All, right. All right, and let's do it. So these are just thinly shredded carrots. We do have a knife skills class, so if anyone needs to improve their knife cutting game, <laughs> sign up for the eight week class in the fall. You doing it in the summer? No, not in the summer. It's gonna be in the fall. All right, look All right. at this beautifully. Look at those carrots. Right, so do you season mm -hmm. the carrots with anything? And a little bit of a salt. Okay, a little bit of salt. So the great thing about panchan is you can, you know, you can make it your own and then keep it separate containers and then it can be nice uh, side dishes or whatever you have cooked or uh, you have a meat, then you can garnish it on top of your steak or your chicken because it already has uh, some seasoning. See, I'm going to sprinkle some of the pepper. So it itself, panchan, it alone has a unique, delicious flavor. I'm going to need some extra. Okay, so you have your container here. All right. Thank you. There we go. 
So is there other things you recommend seasoning your food with, right? Yeah. So besides salt and pepper. Mm. Sesame oil, yes. So if you can very smell this, important. for yes. those that have never had sesame oil, a little bit goes a long way. It's one of those things where as soon as you start using it, you might hear the camera person coughing. <laughs> I use this at the end because it really enhances of the flavor of ingredients. So you don't want to cook up too early like other uh, vegetable oils. It's a really good way of kind of uh, uh, coating at the end. It, it brings all the nice um, yeah. grayness in the so ingredients. So what do we have next, the mushrooms? Mushroom, So before yes. we cook those, right? These are shiitake mushrooms. These are phenomenal. Uh, for those that have never cooked mushrooms before, yeah. you want to make sure that, you know, if you're just using the actual uh, meat component of the mushrooms, that you remove the stems, mm -hmm. right? Don't throw these away, never. right? Worst comes to worst, you can compost them, Yeah. but... I use this one for um, broth, so whenever you are, uh, you need some, some just light soup, for example, for, in my house I use for miso soup or genjangkuk in Korean. Um, this one can really bring you know nice umami flavor. It is rich in it really layers up the the flavor um, components. So use these ones and just do not waste it. It's really good stuff. Yeah I mean if you don't have a lot to begin with you can always freeze them right yeah. and then when you do have enough just like with chicken wings or anything like that save it and then when you do accumulate enough, you can, uh, you know, create your own stock. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where it just, it builds flavor. Right? Oh you yeah. Have that umami. Can I just add flavor. on another idea? So if this and then uh, scallion roots, because yeah. that's, that's a kind of a common thing that we throw away, but they can be, as you can see up there, it can be great uh, vegetable stocks. I mean, once you boil it and then you can, you know, pick it out and then throw away, but that it has uh, so much uh, nutrition inside of the roots too. Yeah, you know, I mean, I love using scallions. They give everything a nice bright flavor. They're beautiful, yep. right, color-wise. It adds a nice pop. And then I used to just throw everything away. I, I never really considered the effect that I was putting in, out in the world, right? Because mm -hmm. the more food that I throw away, the more waste produces yep. times how many people in this world. So we want to make sure that we try to do our part. And it's very simple. You literally just leave the last two inches or a little bit less, you put the roots in water and you mm -hmm. put it by sunlight. So you kind of set it and forget it, you keep adding water, and then after a couple of days, you can just put that in dirt, and then you have a whole new plant. Absolutely. And then you can keep trimming off the top and you have scallions for weeks. Yeah, that's probably easiest the plant that you can grow at home. I mean, I started planting last year during quarantine, and that was the first thing that gave me so much joy because you can see it grows so fast and easy. You just put it on the windowsill, that's it. Now I will... Okay, so we have scallions. So where are you at with the hot sauce? Right now, All I right. just added the rest of my ingredients. So I just added brown sugar, you salt... You want to show the world? Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, well, brown sugar, oh, brown sugar, salt, and uh, now I'm about to add the water. So I can start blending. Okay, so they can't hear us, right? Yeah, that's just... They can hear us? We're all good now? Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Wait, there's some volume problem? Yeah, we had a little bit of water. That's fine. All right, so real quick. Not sure what part you put in here. Um, we can have the Q&A afterwards, and then that way, uh, any questions that do come up, we can... Uh, go from there. Um, what she just ended up doing was sauteed some mushrooms. We were talking about the mushrooms utilizing the, uh, mm -hmm. the stems. So that way, instead of throwing them away, I mean, worst comes to worst, you can compost, but you should use a majority of the product that you have. And mushroom stems provide so much flavor. It's that umami flavor that, you know, when you taste something, you're like, oh my God, what did I just have? This is delicious, right? A lot of times it's from like mushroom ends. Mm -hmm. So no. if you missed anything else, We'll save the last 15 minutes so you can ask as many questions as possible. Mm -hmm. All right, we're also talking about you know scrap gardening so we can utilize your scraps that you would normally throw away. 
So this is just a couple scallions that we put with water. And then in a couple of days, we're gonna take this outside, put it in dirt, and then set it and forget it, keep on clipping some of the, the scallion greens. So that way it's silly to continuously buy some of these herbs because they're so easy to grow. Right? We also have celery. We, we let the bottom sit and then we let it sit in water with uh, the sun mm -hmm. and then it starts to grow. So let's see if we can get this over here. Right? So this was like two days and it's already growing. All right, so the next thing she has going on is the sauteed spinach. I think it was spinach for everyone at home. Spinach cooks very fast. Yeah. All right, so it's one of those things where you kind of want to make sure that you kind of stop cooking it 90% mm -hmm. of the way and it'll carry on over. Exactly. Right, you want this to be nice, bright green, season it with whatever you have, mm -hmm. right? So then while she's doing that, uh, we're going to go back to the, the blender. What do we have blending? What do we have over so, here? Like, well, now I have everything combined. So I have my peppers, okay. my garlic cloves, peeled garlic cloves, um, brown sugar, two tablespoons, four tablespoons of brown sugar, and uh, salt, a tablespoon of salt. And now I'm going to blend it. Right. It's going to get a little loud. Yeah, it's leaking kind of loud. Yeah, so it's leaking water too. So I'll just do it fast. Mm -hmm. Let's get a container for the peppers. All right. Mm -hmm. So how do you know when you're done? When it looks like when it's this color. All when right. So it's nice and blended, right? Yeah, everything is combined. Ooh, all the garlic cloves are Careful. Up. Remember, it's a bunch of chilies. Yeah. Ooh. You don't want to touch your eyes after that. Ooh, yeah. So. All right. So you have back to the spinach. All right. So you have your sautéed spinach. Right. Is there any other items that you added to it? Um, in the spinach. Yes. So I just sprinkle salt and pepper. That's okay. it. Yeah. No and sesame oil to this one? Not now. Okay. Not now. Yeah. So it's oh, the sesame oil is to finish. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good to know. All right. So we have a hot sauce working. Right. We're gonna put that in a container. Let's see if there's any yes. questions so far. If you're doing a bigger batch, I would suggest you do it in parts, because if not, like your, your blender will overflow and start to leak from the bottom. So. Yeah, so if anything, right, if you're doing a large batch, you definitely mm. want to do little by little, mm. especially if you're doing something that's spicy. Or any times, the biggest uh, safety concern I've seen when it comes to blenders is if you're pureeing soups, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to get a nice creamy soup and you're going to put it in a blender, anytime you put hot liquid into a blender, you want to make sure you're careful. You want, don't put more than half of the liquid of the size of the blender because then it could explode, right? No one wants hot soup in their face. So we'll take that out, okay? And then in the meantime, is there any other vegetables that we need to cook? Um, these, no? I think I'm good. Okay. I want to talk about this yeah. one though. So while you do that. So, so this is, this is a bean green. sprout yes, namur. Namur is something that I blanched it. So first of all, I uh, washed uh, bean sprout and then a big pot of a boiling water I uh, you know add on this uh, fresh bean sprout and then just maybe two or three minutes not longer than that just blanching it out so that vegetable is uh, nicely soft and then uh, you scoop it out and then drain all this water and then later on salt pepper a little bit of minced garlic and then sesame oil, just that, that's it. And then you just mix it up, toss it around, and that's the another panchan that you can keep it. This is a great, great side dishes, and it's so tasty. Um, I can't wait to you know mix it all together with on the torso bibimbap. All right. So, is there any other vegetables that you recommend cooking? Right, so the reason why we chose these vegetables is because Can you take this? we wanted to utilize the stuff we had. We didn't really want to go out and buy more vegetables. The whole idea is using what we have available. Because mm. honestly, how many times have you gone into your fridge, opened the doors, can't believe there's no food. When there's like 100 ingredients, right? And then it's like, okay, so yeah. how do we create it? 
Yeah. How do we make something out of what we would have thought was garbage? Yeah. Right? Because it's it's the unfortunate truth. We're so we're fortunate enough to have food in the fridge mm -hmm. and sometimes it goes bad because we're busy and mm -hmm. you know if you get out to work later if you had different things going on mm -hmm. then you might get home or you just might find it easier to pass by a drive through and then have that for dinner it's actually uh, great i'm sorry to interrupt but you brought a really good point about you know those kind of a fresh vegetables how long i mean they can go bad so fast so making this kind of a panchan it can you know, prolong their lives and then it can also bring flavor. So you will more likely eating those vegetables along with the steamed rice or, you know, whatever leftover you have, like a meat or I, I think these are great way of keeping your uh, in your refrigerator, in the fridge. Yeah, ways yeah. of using stuff. Yeah. yeah, put it yeah. in containers, right? wrap it up. Mm -hmm. So tons of ways of doing that. So Great. what we're doing now is tofu, right? I love, I love this dish with beef, but there's other ways of getting, you know, the flavor there. So what we did is we normally uh, would marinate the beef with some soy sauce some ginger, some garlic, yep. a little bit of sesame oil, a little bit of brown sugar. We mm -hmm. did make a small batch, a very small batch, but we wanted to show everyone that you can also do this with, uh, with uh, firm tofu, right? So if you're looking for, uh, a way of getting your meat supplement, mm -hmm. right? Would be firm Great tofu protein. would be a way. And then you can always compress it, marinating whatever you like, right? So we're just gonna get a good sear. Just pan seared. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Wanna make sure your pan is nice and hot. You have the oil? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, and then tofu will pick up any flavor that you give it. So it's one of those things where depending on what type of cuisine you want to cook, mm. right? What kind of flavors do you want to add? Yeah. You want to let it sit, marinate, you know, add a couple, uh, add a pan on top of this uh, with a couple of cans. So that way it acts as a weight. Mm. It removes the moisture. Absolutely. Right? So then yeah. that way it's nice and firm. So you can even grill this. Mm -hmm. So. There are right. so many ways to use tofu. I mean, and then there's a different firmness. If you go to grocery, I mean, there's a soft tofu, there is a um, stew purpose tofu, and then this is obviously firm it's tofu. So the silken tofu, which I've had in smoothies. Yeah. All right. So. Or you can just, you know, the stew, like, you know, some of the, uh, what I like is a sundu jjigae, which is like, you know, little stew add on. Okay. So it gives it some kind of flavor, but also texture, right? Yeah. So, so this is great. Let's see. We have some vegetables cooking. We have about five minutes left on the rice, mm -hmm. right? We have the vegetables. Um, earlier today, we uh, sliced some watermelon radish. Uh, for those at home, watermelon radish is this beautiful uh, red center, green outside uh, radish. Um, it's a little peppery, delicious. Uh, and it's more for like the visual component too, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. It's it has great. a nice fresh component. So now you have your warm rice, you have yeah. your vegetables that happen to be room temperature. This is a great item to have whenever you're hosting people because mm -hmm. then they can just serve themselves, right? It doesn't have to be presented in this one dish. Yeah, yeah. Right, you can have all the sides, kind of like your serve your own style, add the different components, right? Um, the garmage class ended up fermenting that cabbage. Um, so when you first open that, that container, uh, for a lot of the students, it was a big surprise. Mm. It was a huge surprise because it was that smell of fermented yeah. cabbage, which I, I started it's to love. It's, it's a There are yeah. many ways of the explaining. I mean, fermenting itself, because of, you know, it's a bacteria as a work. It's a good, good, healthy bacteria, and it helps our digestion. Good for you, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it has a, so many health factors in, 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 in any type of... Uh, uh, fermentation, fermentation um, products, yeah. like the cheese or uh, pickles. I mean, the kimchi is, you know, products of pickling. Yeah, so that's that's the thing I like the most is uh, getting a chance to. So it ruins us. Be careful. There's a steam comes out, so we just need to be watch out. Look at that. You're cooking at home, and you have someone talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> this is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, very nice. Yeah. And a safety precaution. So it is, um, you know, it's warning us that 
the steam is coming out. Watch out. Be careful. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, it's just uh, one of the things I enjoy the most about what, what I do here is getting a chance to see everyone and convincing them to try something new, right? Mm. As long as you're not allergic to something, right? Right, And that's my biggest uh, peeve. Sometimes someone will say, I don't like this. I don't like mushrooms. Yeah. Well, why? Yeah. When you were three years old, when you first had it, did the person that cooked it for you, was it just a bad dish that they cooked, mm. right? Maybe they didn't know how to properly make it. Mm -hmm. Now we're at a point where we're trying different things. And if you don't like it, now you know you don't like it. So. All right, we got the tofu, it's getting nice here. Hey, vegetables are cooking. Oh, looking And hey, we have some hot sauce that was made earlier this week. So that's going, we just put this on top of the pan just so it can get nice and hot. Yes. All right, my favorite part of this <laughs> is that sticky, you know, yeah, crispy, sizzling. Oh, yeah, that that is another magic component about this. So bibimbap is a very common, um, you know, type of a Korean meal. Seriously, like you can uh, mix with any type of a panchan with uh, just a bowl of rice or whatever leftover, or you can create with your other ingredients. But this one, on top of a stone pot. Because of it keeps the heat, and then later on I'm gonna layer on with the cooked Double rice, pension. and then assorted the dishes, pension. side dishes, the panchan goes on, Double beautifully pension. assorted, and then Double later pension. on we're gonna mix it with gochujang. That's uh, one of the um, one of the. <laughs> the it's one of the staples you want to have. Staples in an, right. uh, pantry This is one of the items. things where yes. uh, normally if you go to my house you're gonna see some sort of jalapeno, you're gonna see some sort of onions and. Uh, potatoes, right? But I, I definitely go design. You want to have that. It changes yes. everything. I sometimes mix it with a tomato uh, sauce for a spaghetti. Oh, like yeah? I put, yeah, because sometimes I want a little kick to it, right? Yeah, so, it's a nice little red pepper paste. Exactly. So I mix it while I'm making in a spaghetti sauce. I just, you know, put one or two scoops, uh, two tablespoons of gochujang. So it has a really richness and, you know, the different layers of flavor. So these are all just tips and tricks so that way if you're at home, right, you don't have to make the paste. You don't have to do any of that stuff because it's already done for you, mm -hmm. right? And then it makes cooking a lot easier at home and that way you still get that same great flavor mm -hmm. that you would if you were going to a Korean restaurant at home. So You're the chef in your own house. And then how much money are you saving, right? I, I mean, know. I love going out to eat, yeah. don't get me wrong, but it's just think about how much money that adds up to, right? So. If you can cook at home, you know exactly how much butter you're putting in there. Right. You can modify all these ingredients as you like. So I'm going to open my rice cooker. Ta-da! Wow. Isn't how that easy beautiful? That was. <laughs> now I'm going to just fluff up. Oh, so we could have done all this in one pan. I know. This way. Okay, um, two pans is okay. Two pans. Okay, stone is, is good. Heated. Stone is smoking, right? It smells already good. Oh, yay. So, I need uh, soy the, okay. yes, so the brush. This here. Need the brush. All right, let's be careful with this. Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's very, very hot. Okay, so give me one second. There you go. Okay, be careful when you do this at home. Okay, in the meantime, I'm taking out the tofu. Got this really nice here. Yep. Okay, we'll go from here. It'll go on top. Put that into a triangle, please. Oh no, 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 no stone pot it um, we want to have a layer so that it doesn't stick and but also that the crispness and then also the rice it can 
balance with the sesame oil so that it, it brings another layer of you know, nice. flavor in, in within the rice. It's all about building flavors. Exactly. Regardless so I'm of just... what you're doing, you have to build flavors, right? We're not just doing one thing and mm -mm. yes, we did it all in one pot, but we're, we're choosing the right vegetables to go at, you know, at a time. There you go. Nicely coated. Okay, now I'm going to layer with steamed rice. Now, if I didn't have this at home, is there a suggestion that you have? Mm -hmm. How yes. can I do this without having to go to the store and buy the pot? So right. I recently uh, learned from the cookbook that so if you do not have, I mean, the um, cast, iron, cast iron, okay. yes, the cast iron pot can work exactly the same way and because it know, keeps the heat. And then okay, so something to it. keep the heat, something to act as the vessel and it, yes. it makes, it allows you to feed on the larger family than just Absolutely. the one serving, right? I right. Hope this is, a one this serving. is a, yeah, yeah, for one serving. So if you have in a large cast iron, then you can layer up with the rice and then Put all this upon chance, so it it's it's beautiful, you know. Yeah, I mean, one of the family little, little by shared. little, we'll mm -hmm. start to have family gatherings more. We'll start to have those friends and family over. So, yes. this is a great dish that's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. You're using your leftover rice, right? And if you happen to make too much rice, do you have any tips and tricks for the people at home? I do, I do. So. As you see, we will have a lot of leftover white mm -hmm. rice here. Um, when I, uh, I can split, so the, using Ziploc or in a little container, you can, if you can use that um, echo bag or, you know, the, put it something that we can. Yeah, something reusable, right? Reusable. Something we can use yes. again. The thing is we already turned on the machine. Tomorrow might just be a lot busier for me so that I can just take this out, mm -hmm. right? You can make a fried rice Absolutely. using your leftover rice. If you know you're not going to use it in the next two days or so, freeze, freeze it. it. Yes. Freeze it in the plastic bag, in the bag that you can reuse again, yeah. right? And then when you take this out, as much as I hate using the microwave, you pop this in there, mm -hmm. it's a convenience and it's right out, right? Yeah. So you have this, you have your rice, you have your vessel, and then you can literally add whatever you have. Right. So at least one of my favorite snacks is just egg on top of plain oh, rice. Oh, that's what I had for lunch. Yeah. Like, uh, literally, I had a uh, steamed rice and then, you know, sunny side of egg. And then I put a little bit of a soy sauce, um, mm -hmm. you know, sesame oil. Mm -hmm. I just uh, mix it up and that's, that was my lunch. Yeah, a little avocado if you have some. That'll Look be at good. your pantry, see what you <laughs> yes, have. Yes, whatever you have And then just pantry. start topping it Why up, not? right? Why this not? is your dish. Why yeah. not? <laughs> you know, think about what's for crunch, what else are you adding to it? Have some experiment yeah. and then have some fun. And you never and know, it might be <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Right, worst yeah, comes to worst, you just... <laughs> okay, now I'm going to layer up this banchan on top of the rice. So, is the egg right. ready? Yeah, you want to so, go with the egg? Yes, I'm going right, to put so the egg in the center. All right, so we have our fried egg. All right, I'm going to make sure the yolk is nice and runny still. Perfect, thank you. And then I will put the banchan components around it. My mom used to say, before you taste it, your eyes, your eyes can feel the food and then those appetite uh, comes within your eyes. So like my mom really emphasized the color coordination. So yellow, orange, green, uh, white. You're right, we eat with our food first, right? I mean, yeah. We eat with our eyes the visual. first. Yeah. And then now in a world of social media, everyone's taking a picture before they even eat. <laughs> So, <laughs> this is so true. <laughs> highly recommend don't take too long taking pictures because the food's going to get cold it's hot. and then your experience is going to change. All right? We want to make sure that the food comes hot. out hot and you consume it hot. So, like this. And then. All right, yes, the yep. So, is there an ingredient that we don't have today that you wish we could have put on? Take it down so you can hold it. So, okay. yes. Um, the zucchini that if I had a time so, then I could just uh, slice it and saute it um, and okay, then so be careful. there you go. go there have nicely. our tofu look at yes. us and then I will put some kimchi on the right and on the corner here all right so it's just a bowl full of flavors 
Absolutely. So every single time you take a bite, it's going to be something different. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. A lot of times when we consume something after like the third bite, we're just eating to get full. Yes. And now with this bowl, Isn't you're eating beautiful? to like try all these different flavors. Look at that. It looks beautiful. <laughs> and then I'm going to just coat it with sesame oil. Okay. Okay. Be careful with that because it comes out out of the bottle super fast, yes. right? <laughs> so. I try. Now, later on, when you mix. Okay. Well, we forgot the watermelon radish and the scallions. Oh, There's scallions. There's so many items just in here it that top. it's hard to, yeah. to keep track, right? How do we do it without a It's not too late. Load? We can just yeah. put the sprinkles right there. You right go. There. Look at that color. Yeah. Bibimbap is so easy. You can just add on whatever you want. And then this is. Yeah, pickled onions. Pickled onions. It gives another flavor. Okay. Can you guess? And then that pop of color, right? I feel like a lot of times people get uh, discouraged on doing techniques like pickling or fermenting because it, yeah, it might scare them to try it in the beginning. Oh, no. But all we're doing is just slicing the, the onions and then um, we heat up some vinegar, which your favorite seasoning. And I like to use chili pepper, I mean chili flakes, a little bit of mustard seeds, coriander seeds, a touch of salt and sugar. Let that heat up to a boil and then put all that liquid into your, uh, your onions that you just sliced, right? So then you let it sit, let it cool down. When it properly cools down, put it in the fridge, put them in jars. And it's one of those things where you just constantly keep on adding flavor to the normal dishes you would have. Yeah. So we're increasing the color, increasing, you know, everything. So beautiful dish. Thank you for doing this. Absolutely. So normally you would combine this as you're mixing? Yes. Okay. So this is what um, gochujang is a sweet chili pepper paste, okay. and I so I prefer to just mix with a little bit of a, uh, sesame oil to make it a little smoother, so that that gives you know um, easy to mix. Easier to spread. Know. Yeah, easy to spread. Well, and we can always top it off with our homemade sriracha, that's true. right? That's homemade a possible. hot sauce. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to put hot sauce on everything. Oh yeah, I like the spicy food. I want to make sure it's spicy, but not overwhelming where it's like I don't taste anything else. Yeah. Um, well, that's great. Thank you very much. All right. So at this Thank point, <laughs> if anyone has any questions, uh, we'll take a look, and we if we can answer them, we will. All right. So. Anyone have any questions? Where does the soy sauce go? So the soy sauce goes when um, we use it earlier for the tofu to marinate the tofu, or if you want to show the beef, right? So a great way to season um, the marinate. The, yeah, yes. marinate something mm -hmm. is is a uh, soy sauce. Soy sauce, right. sugar, uh, garlic, and then some of the other ingredients. But the soy sauce is the main ingredient for the marinating. Uh, yeah, but meat. you want to be careful when you add soy sauce because it's going to make everything, you know, that's a yes. salty component mm -hmm. that you're adding. So if the recipe does call for soy sauce, you want to make sure that you don't add any extra salt until you finally yeah. taste it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the tofu was actually in the marinade that was um, that we used for the beef, right? What is the name of the, the traditional beef dish? Uh, bulgogi. bulgogi. Bulgogi is a thin sliced beef, marinated okay. beef. Okay. And the one we have here is a galbi. So as you can see, there's a bone in it, and this is a little uh, chewier, and it's a harder. You know, it's definitely uh, one of the my favorite my favorite barbecue Korean meal. Yeah, it's a nice, uh, great piece of beef, short rib, right? <coughs> short you rib. You want to make yeah. sure if you are using a short rib. Um, when you get it cross cut like that, mm. that uh, I recommend pounding it down so that way it thins it out. It lets the marinade to really concentrate in there. It tenderizes everything. Yes. And then when you grill it, right, because there's sugar in there, yeah. it's going to caramelize the actual meat. It's going to be nice and brown. It's going to be delicious. Can I okay. add on one of those ingredients that in order to marinate yeah. the beef, my mom used to add on apple, okay. kiwi. Oh, there's um, kiwis in this one and uh, Asian pears. Yes. So oh, for yeah. those that haven't These, seen it, Mm -hmm. These are a great way to uh, make, you yeah. know, tenderize your meat. Is kimchi easy to make? Yes, I think so. At least for our first try, right? I mean, we still have a long way to go, but um, we can definitely send a recipe over to everyone who uh, signed up today. Mm. Um, we do have a video how to make the, the hot sauce. Um, we have some pictures of the fermenting process. But with kimchi, the hardest part is just making sure that everything's sanitized. 
right? So we're sanitizing the, the jars that we're using multiple mm. times. You want to make sure whatever it is you're doing, it's clean because you're letting bacteria grow. So yeah. if everything is, you know, if you didn't clean it properly, you can, you can get something bad. Yeah. You don't want to so, contaminate it. Yeah, you want to make sure you're careful. And then it's just cutting a few vegetables, right? And then, you know, mm. Napa cabbage, we take Napa cabbage, we let it sit in some salt. Yeah. So what the salt's going to do to the Napa cabbage is it removes all the moisture. Mm -hmm. So then it, you will be surprised how much it drains. But yeah, then uh, afterwards, all we did was just strain it rinse it so that way it doesn't actually come out super salty. Mm -hmm. And then we add uh, some radishes, we added some carrots, mm -hmm. right? You were in the carpentry class, correct? So is there anything else in the beginning that we added that you saw? All right. No, but I know like once it was changed, we added like cucumbers and stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. so once we let it ferment, just to give it a pop of freshness, I like to incorporate some cucumbers on there um, and a little bit more scallions and then season as you, know, as you go. So mm -hmm. it's literally just cabbage, carrots, kind of like your leftover pieces that you have left over. And then the gochujang, because everyone's going to go and buy some now. Um, and that's it. <laughs> and a little bit of fish sauce. All right. One of the items, too, that you want to have at home is fish sauce. All right. In the beginning, it might scare you off if you taste it, just because um, it's, it's a little. It's a strong, so, yeah. and it, it, because it's a, again, the fish sauce itself is a fermented uh, anchovy liquid. So. Um, it can be, if you're not used to, then it can be too overwhelming. But um, try small by small, and then you will really like it that, that um, the richness that it brings in. Also, I want to add on, uh, if you do, if you go to you know, one of the Asian uh, market, then you can see the small salted uh, shrimp that's very tiny. Um, those shrimp. add a lot of flavor. Yes, it, right. it, it's really strong and it can bring a whole, you know, different level of a pungentness, but it helps um, later on your kimchi uh, flavor. Okay. Yeah, one of those uh, dried shrimp, right? Um, so someone asked if we can introduce ourselves again. Actually, the class, they want to know about you guys, right? Because there was a little technical issues in the beginning. Okay. Right? So start off with Akisha. Uh, well, yeah, my name is Akisha. This is my third year at Triton. I'll be graduating this year. All right, with, congratulations. Uh, thanks, with my culinary arts associate's degree. Is and it one I'm, of those like love and hate things? You're like, oh man, what am I gonna do now? Yeah. Am I gonna come to all the Chef Manny's classes? <laughs> 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 um, and then I will be transferring, hopefully to Kendall College at National Lewis University nice. to finish my bachelor's in business and culinary arts. Very nice. Over here, we okay. have. My name is Sanhi. Um, I am studying hotel motel management in Triton College, and then this year I'm graduating. And currently, um, I am an intern at the Oak Park Country Club, and I am, yeah, I am pursuing um, for the road, and then hopefully one day I can open my own hospitality service line, and and. I do have a big dream. <laughs> Good. Big dreams are great, right? I think we might change our mind and we want to come back for cooking. I mean, you did a Anytime, great job, if right? You, if you guys to call me, then I will be here. And then in round two, I can make another well, room. All right. And then last but not least, the person that made all this happen, just get over here. Yeah, right. Yeah. You can hear her mic. All right. So she was responsible for a lot of the marketing we did yes. today, putting all this together, right? This is a catering class. It's a very small class. and from very, you know, from the beginning to the end, mm -hmm. this group right here made it happen. Beatrice? Oh, yeah, you, you, say, you can use her mic. Yeah. We'll just get, yeah, they can hear you. Who are you? You're say hi, introduce yourselves. What are you doing? Are you, you're <laughs> you graduating your soon, paper. correct? No, that's fine. No? Okay. They can hear you. Oh, okay. They can hear yeah. you. Yeah. Hello, my name is Beatrice, and I'm a baking and pastry student, and I graduate next year. Nice. Congratulations. And big things, right? You also are in this, uh, what is the thing you're in right now? This competition? The greatest baking competition. The greatest baking competition? Yeah. All right, so for Yay! those, Beatrice, right? We'll put your name on there. So chance to win $10,000. Please support her. Let's support yes. the team, right? <laughs> Fellow Triton student. Yes. All right, so we have that. Hello. Let's see if there's any other questions. All right. Let's go to more stories. Trying cooking. Okay. We are right there. I think that's it. Anyone else have any questions? All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. 
Um, if anyone has any other questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm always on campus. You can send me an email at Uribe at Manny at Gmail. Oh, no, my email, <laughs> what am I saying? at Tryon.edu, right? For any of those uh, interested in just learning how to cook something, highly recommend taking some of our classes. For those who are interested in just uh, learning to grow more food or compost, anything like that, we have uh, some great horticulture classes happening in the summer as well. So lots of possibilities, you know, try something new, right? We're always going to be eating. So why not learn to cook for ourselves, cook for our loved ones? Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Thank you.